So for whatever reason, you're interested in getting into the rabbit hole that is sim racing. But a quick Google search and you realize this may not be as accessible as you may have thought it to be. Don't worry though, because in this video, I'll be guiding you and providing several suggestions for how you can begin sim racing for as cheap as possible. And for your convenience, all products and gear mentioned are linked in the video description. If you're looking for great deals on sim racing, PC, and gaming peripherals, make sure to check out simspots.com where the best sales, discounts, and deals on everything sim racing are posted daily. Starting off, we're going to need to figure out where you'll be doing your racing, and for this, there are three main options. The first and the cheapest will be on your existing desk or table. Many budget wheels, which I'll cover in a second, come with table clamps and mounting solutions for users who don't have access to a dedicated sim racing cockpit or wheel stand. This could be a great option for you if you are tight on budget and space, but keep in mind that consistently removing and reinstalling the wheel onto your desk may get annoying, especially if you'll be doing so constantly. A wheel stand is also a common option for beginners as they take up less space than a full-fledged cockpit but do a good job at holding up your entry to mid-level wheel and pedals. Wheel stands are usually found between the $150 to $250 price point and provide a good middle ground for those who really just want to get up in racing and don't care too much about the look of their setup. A sim racing cockpit is usually the preferred option for most, and though high-end ones can far surpass the $1,000 mark, there are, especially nowadays, a lot of solid ones available for far less than that. For example, the Nexel Racing G2 Lite Pro, which I've recently reviewed, offers a good-looking and comfortable seat, wheel, pedal, and shifter mounts, and is fully retractable for those tight on space. This one retails for $300 new, but there are slightly cheaper options which I've also linked in the video description. Keep in mind that on the websites like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, a lot of great sim racing gear can be found for far cheaper prices. So if you can't find anything in your budget or don't want to spend more on taxes or shipping, buying on the secondhand market could be a great option for you. Now that you know where you'll be placing your gear, it's time to talk about the star of the show, the wheel and the pedals. Now for complete novices who are extremely tight on budget, you'll be looking at options such as the Logitech G29 and G920, Thrustmaster T128, T248, T150, and TMX. While all of those options are the most affordable in sim racing, they do quickly get outclassed if you spend a little bit more, but before that, let's actually talk about them. The Thrustmaster T128 is the cheapest and newest force feedback wheel offered by Thrustmaster and often retails for around $150. However, with a full plastic wheel, low levels of force, and abysmal pedals, unless you're buying this for a child, I wouldn't really recommend it. The T248 is the bigger brother to the T128 and is a much more solid option with a higher quality wheel and pedals, but is significantly more expensive at around $300 to $400, and at that price point, you'll find a lot better for only a little bit more. It's for that reason that at its $400 retail price, I would not recommend it. However, if you do find it for around two to $300, it is a solid choice. Keep in mind that both the T248 and T128 are compatible with consoles, but pay special attention to which version you buy as they will only work with either Xbox or PlayStation, not both. And of course, all of the wheels that I mentioned in this video will work on PC. Now discontinued by Thrustmaster, the T150, which works for PlayStation, and the TMX, which is basically the same thing except it works on Xbox, are very solid options that can still be purchased new for around $150. Simply speaking, at around the $150 to $200 price point, they are solid options and can often be found used for even less than that. Now moving on to Logitech, the G29 which works for PlayStation and the G920 which works for Xbox have been the crown jewel of entry level sim racing wheels and pedals for close to a decade. 
Simply put, they're a good option between the $150 to $250 price tag. Now, I know that I just flew past all of those, but keep in mind that if you are looking for more detailed reviews and comparisons of them, I have separate, far more in-depth videos talking about all of those products and they are linked below. Now, if I were making this video about a year ago, I would have been moving on to talking about something else. However, in 2023, approaching 2024, the landscape of entry-level SimRacing wheels has changed dramatically. All of the aforementioned wheels are simply fading out of existence and being replaced by far superior direct drive systems, which provide a night and day experience when it comes to realism, performance, and in-game immersion. So what am I talking about? Well, closer to the three to $500 price tag, entry-level drive drive systems, which are often bundled with wheels and pedals, come into the mix and blow everything below it out of the water. The main players here are going to be the following, and again, I have four reviews on all of them if you want to know more. The Moza Racing R5 bundle, offered with a synthetic leather wheel, pedals, table clamp, and five nanometer drive drive wheelbase, all for $500. This is an extremely solid package, all at a competitive price point, but will only work on PC, not on console. The Fanatec CSL DD Ready to Race Bundle, which also offers a 5nm drag drive wheelbase with solid pedals and a wheel for only $400. Significantly, this one will work on Xbox, does not come with a table clamp, although one can be purchased separately, and will allow you to upgrade to a much more powerful 8nm drag drive wheelbase if you purchase the Boost Kit power supply separately later down the road. Now, when talking about entry-level direct drive wheels, you'll hear everything about Fanatec and Moza all over the place, but there are other, lesser-known competitors out there such as Camus with the Camus C5. In at only around $250, this direct drive wheelbase is unique in that the wheel is integrated into the wheelbase itself, but ultimately, it provides a decent direct drive experience at a very compelling price. All of the wheels I mentioned come with some type of bundle that includes the pedals, wheelbase, and steering wheel, meaning that alongside having somewhere to place them onto, you should be good to go. Other considerations regarding monitors, shifters, handbrakes, and other accessories really come down to your preferences. Ultimately, if you are looking to start out for as cheap as possible, one monitor is fine, the paddle shifters included with every wheel would not necessitate a separate shifter, and regardless of being on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, there are decent sim racing titles for each. Now I've covered a lot of different hardware options in this video, which definitely can get confusing, but hopefully this video served as a good introduction of what's out there in the entry level range. Remember, I have far more in-depth reviews on all of the hardware mentioned if you are interested in learning more. So with all that being said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Did I miss anything which you would consider important for entry level sim racers to know about? And as always, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you